In this video, we're going to examine the render settings in general and ambient lighting in particular. Let's start by turning out our sun. I'm just going to disable it. Notice that while the scene dims slightly, it still remains lit. This is because there's more to how our scene is lit and how it feels or its mood than the lights in our scene. The render settings have a big impact on how our scene feels. If we take a look at them, first you'll see fog. Fog can be used for a variety of effects, one of which is our underwater effect. But we could also have fog in our scene. I can just turn fog on. And now you may have noticed back in the distance, let me just bring this to full screen. Our islands are now covered in a dense fog and there's even fog down here. Let me just run it. You can see the trees in the distance are foggy. So depending on the density of the fog, we'll end up with a different feel or a different mood to our scene. I'm just going to get to the top of the hill so you can see the island on the other side. You'll see there that island is shrouded in fog. While this fog is a bit too dense, it does definitely change the mood in our scene. So let's leave fog on, but let's just turn it down quite a bit. Let's turn the fog density down to 0 0.0025. And let's change its color. We want to change this color to something that's going to match sort of the sun that we have in the background. Something like that, a yellowish kind of fog. Now, because our scene has fog in it, this is why it was important way back when we wrote our underwater scripts. We saved and restored all of the fog settings because now we have a scene if we maximize it and we run it. And you can see now the fog is just slightly affecting the distant islands. You can see that distant island's got a little bit of yellow fog, a little bit of haze. But when we go under the water, we switch to our blue fog. And so it was very important that we restore those fog settings when we come back up out from under the water. And I kind of like that. It kind of makes the distant island seem a little bit more realistic now that it's covered in a bit of a hazy fog. So we're going to leave that fog setting. There are different kinds of fog. We're going to use the EXP2 fog, but there's exponential and linear fog. As you move down in this list, you get to less compute intensive and less realistic fog, unless you're using a platform like a mobile platform or some other platform where fog is causing a problem. You should stick with the highest quality fog. Ambient light is next. I'm going to skip over that and come back because I want to look at skyboxes. So we've seen two skyboxes already. And there's a whole bunch of different skyboxes, and the skybox can really change how the scene feels as well. So we could have a bright sunny skybox, and it gives us a bright sunny day here, and that really changes how the scene feels. Or we could have a moonlit skybox, and again, that's really going to change how the scene feels. So just by changing the skybox, we can really change the feel of the scene. We're going to have to change the lighting to match our skybox. We just can't change a skybox without changing any of the other lighting. And of course, we can have our dawn or dusk skybox, which is the one we're going to keep because that's the one that we like for the game. And that's the one that all of our lighting and all of our mooding now fits with. There are a couple of other settings here, the halo strength and the flare strength. These are global settings for the halos and flares that will be in our scene. As well, there's a global cookie for spotlights and a global halo texture. Now I want to go back to the ambient light. Let's turn the ambient light all the way down. This will essentially turn the ambient light in our scene off. And now let's take a look at the game. With both our sun and our ambient light turned off, there's still some lighting in the game. Our skybox still is lit. And our water, it actually has its own light. And the fog is providing some light. But other than that, the scene gets pretty dark when we have both our sun and our ambient light turned off. Well, you also notice these plants, they're illuminated. They are a self-illuminated texture. So it's possible to create some light through different shaders. But a lot of our light in our scene is dependent on either our sun, our directional light, or the ambient light. If we leave the ambient light off and we just turn our sunlight back on, you can see we did get some light back in the scene but it doesn't look natural. We could try to light the scene with a whole bunch of directional lights pointing in different directions, but you're never going to get the same feel, the same mood that you'll get with the ambient light turned on. You can see there is just a little bit more light coming from the sun, 
But the sun's not really providing that much light to the scene. It's really the ambient light that is lighting our scene. Okay, so let's turn the ambient light back on. And the ambient light is the first light that you should set in your scene. Once you've picked your sky box, you want to turn your ambient light on because that is really what is going to set the mood or the feel in your scene. And whatever color you pick for the ambient light is going to determine exactly how your scene is going to feel. So if we want to brighten it up a bit, we can change it to that. But maybe that feels overlit to you and you want it to be a little bit darker. So then you would just come in and change your ambient light, let's say to something a little less. And that darkens the scene up a bit. So as you can see, simply playing with the ambient light makes a big difference to how the scene feels or the mood of the scene. And with that, I'm going to end this video on the rendering settings and the ambient light.